Hey, welcome back everybody to another episode of Hermitcraft. So, as many of you guys know, I love starting new projects. Oh, it's just the best. <laughs> uh, finishing projects, that's, a, that's another story. But last episode, you might remember, we started a project, the Trident Farm, and I got the Trident before we even finished the thing. And yeah, I gotta admit, I was a little tempted. You know, we got our trident. Do we really need to finish the farm? I would rather start a new project. Uh, but no, I, I put the I put the time in, guys. I got it done. There wasn't really a whole lot left to do. I just added this little bit on the front and the water channels sticking out the side there to funnel all the drowned guys into a single point. So I needed some way of getting up to the top there because I again I'm in the no wings club, right? <laughs> so we installed this water elevator, take us all the way up to the top here to this platform. And I uh, got enclosed so that I don't get phantomed, and then the drowned guys end up in front here if nobody else is online. <laughs> uh, I haven't had much opportunity to use this farm yet. I had one time when, when it was just me and Scar on, and I was getting a drowned guy like every five seconds. It was amazing. And I got a second trident during that, that time, so we got a backup. But uh, since then... There's always been like three or four people online at least. But yeah, it's not really a big deal either because Iskill has a trident, I've got a trident, and we got a backup trident now. So the only reason we'd really need more is if we were trying to sell to other people. Just in case you're curious what happened on the inside here. Um, so the we got the big aquarium in front of us. That's the river biome with the bubble columns bringing the drowned guys up to the top here. Then they fall into a water stream which goes and merges together in the middle here from bo both sides. And then there's the elevator here for the drowned zombies. We got a fence to bring them up to a soul sand block, which then pulls them in and they go up the elevator and end up in our chamber here where we slice and dice them with our sword. Oh, snappers, wait a second. We got a chance here, everybody. We're the only ones online because the server just reset and kicked everybody off. <laughs> so we probably got a couple minutes where we can uh, get an idea of how, how fast this actually works. And it's looking good. It's looking pretty good. I'm happy with this. You might remember we got that beacon last time. I've been doing some grinding, some off-camera mining. Although now I'm showing it to you. <laughs> but yeah, just collecting some stuff for building, you know. We got to get some ice. Headed out to a mesa and got some clay for building. And then we went to the desert. Mined up some bushes just to have them. And uh, gathered up some sand. And also, I did some speed mining with the new terrain changes in 1.17. So here's what I found. This is my first time speed mining in 1.17. The deep slate does slow you down quite a bit because you can't really speed mine through that. You gotta go around it. But I felt like there was more resources underground. It might just be my imagination. Might have just been like the spot <laughs> was lucky or something. I don't know. But I got quite a bit of stuff uh, pretty quickly there. So I'm pretty sure I got more redstone and lapis and all that stuff, but typically I think when I would mine out a 100 by 100 area, I would get about so 40 to 60 diamonds on average. This time I got over 90. <laughs> so if it's not uh, different, I definitely set a new record. Because my goodness, we got money now. Let's go spend it. But first, wait, check this out. Uh, so I've been, like I said, doing some grinding, right? If we check the tab list here, I'm at 150. The first medal we get at 100 days, we have got the Wood Wings medal, guys. Etho, congratulations on reaching Wood Wings. <laughs> uh, so our next rank is at 250, then I think it was 500, then 750, then 1,000 if I remember right. So we got a ways to go still, but that, that's very nice. Feel like uh, I'm making it. I've suffered a bit <laughs> without the wings. So I think we should take some time to goof around a little bit this episode. Uh, Corellis mentioned to me that his shop is now open. Let's check this place out. The big guys pass and cast. <laughs> oh, man. That is such a good name. Because uh, you're passing by it, right? It's it's like one of those shops you pass by all the time. <laughs> oh, I like that. Okay. Yeah, so it's officially open. Oh, I wanted to check this out, too. I think this is like the Quickie XP Blast One Diamond. Let's just see what happens here. Oh, wow. It gives a lot. <laughs> hey, that's that's pretty worth it, honestly. There's a lot there. Free horse speed. Okay, this is what I wanted to check out. So he's got... Uh, oh, it's arrows. Interesting. Full platinum service XP. 
Two diamonds. We got to see what this is about. <laughs> oh, man. If you really need a good wash, you know, you go for the two diamonds. There we go. Sorry, Giddy. I didn't mean to do it to you. <laughs> oh, this is great. We got a good minute of uh, speed. That's that's handy. Limited stock. Shulker boxes. Four diamonds each. Oh, okay. Calm down. Calm down. We'll, we'll take one. We'll take one. No, we gotta get at least two. Ah, uh, we gotta we gotta save some for the other people on the server, though. You know, probably every, everybody wants shulker boxes. Oh, but now that one's floating. I should get one as well. Uh, I don't want to hog them all, though. You know, other people need shulker boxes for sure. I'm not gonna be greedy. I'm not a hoarder. You know, desperate times. I'm. I mean, I'm not going end raiding without wings. <laughs> so these shulker boxes are pretty valuable to me. We gotta. We gotta get them, but I'm gonna be a good good guy. I'm gonna leave the rest for the other hermits. All books, one diamond each. Oh, that's that's good. Man, he's he's got stuff for days here. He's got saddles. He's got food. Two stacks for a diamond. Glass, three for a diamond. Man, these are good prices too, Corellis. I'm impressed. Wow. Okay, looting the rest of the books over there, and the big guy's whoopsie box. Whoa. Okay, so this might make me look a little bit bad, but hear me out. Wait a second. Don't judge me just yet. Corellis actually has three of these stores around the server. This is our local one by me and Iskal. And pretty much we're the only ones that live near this store. So he's pretty much built this store for just me and Iskal, right? It's not bad if I hoard the entire stock here, right? I, I think we're doing everybody a favor, honestly. By doing that I don't feel bad about that right <laughs> the, the other people can just go to the other stores if they need shulker boxes uh, oh man okay okay we, we can afford oh people are buying them that's not good okay we can get ten more one two three four five six seven eight nine ten oh I gotta go speed mining I gotta go get more diamonds more diamonds giddy you, you know they can get their toilet paper online or their shulker boxes online all right, everybody. So you might remember last episode, we set up this moss farm, this bone meal farm, and uh, I've been running it for a while now. It's working out pretty good. I'm very happy with it. Now, there's a couple new things I want to show you in this room, starting off with this, <laughs> the giant control panel. This is an idea that's really stuck with me throughout Minecraft. Like, even my very first base in, in my YouTube series, I had this idea of making a control panel to control a bunch of different redstone devices. I just like that idea of Hey, I'm in control of my base. I flip levers and things happen around me. I just, I think that's neat. Even though it's not the most practical of things, you're better off just building a farm and having a switch right at the farm. But still, I want to do it. <laughs> so we're trying to hook up all the different bone meal farms to this control panel. And the great thing is bone meal farms are very small. They're very simple. They all kind of operate under the same basic principle. You need a clock. If you put two observers together like this, they create a clock, and then you can turn that on and off just by extending a piston. You make them uh, pulse into a dispenser with bone meal in, and then that grows something. That's pretty much how they all work. Yeah, so our ultimate goal here is to build all these farms, cram them into this tiny little room, which hopefully should be easy because most of them are very small. You can see I got started on four of them here, fit in this tiny little space. Um, and then... Once we got everything hooked up to the control panel, hopefully we can make this room look nice and, as well and, and kind of bring some life into it would be awesome. Now, so far, the only one I got hooked up is the actual moss farm, the bone meal part of it. So when we flip the lever, that turns the farm on and off. We got a little light here to indicate when it's when stuff is on. So that's pretty cool. Uh, now, if we want to hook up the, the berries right over here, all we got to do is run from the back a wire all the way to that piston that controls the farm, which should be right over here. So that extends, turns the clock on, and then we got two dispensers with bone meal up there that get triggered. Let's give it a try here. So we flip the lever down, and now that turns on our dispensers, and all we gotta do is right click. Oh, with an empty hand. We get berries for days, look at that. <laughs> so it's pretty simple, right? Uh, when we're done, when we're sick of the noise, we shut that off. Uh-huh. So berries are a little bit special because they require two bone meal to re reach full maturity. That's why we have two dispensers facing it. While most of this other stuff only is going to need one bone meal 
um, but they might have other special requirements. So for this one, the roots, we actually have to face the dispenser into the rooted dirt over here. We can't just punch it to get it. We actually have to shear it. So we're going to need some shears around here too. We got the glowberries hooked up as well now. So let's give those a try. Did a little bit of decorating here. I'm trying to figure out what I'm doing with this room. <laughs> so I just hold right click on these and then they fall down to the slab below. Should I get rid of the stair here and just have like another hopper and a slab so that it gets them all? Because some of them are landing on the stair actually. Hopper slab, hopper slab, hopper slab, hopper ethos slab. And now we got the lichen hooked up as well. So let's give that a quick little test here. This stuff we got to shear. We got a we got it growing up at the top here. Then it grows down to this block. Oh, and it's uh, it actually takes a little bit of time to shear. We might need efficiency on the shears to get it quickly. All right, everybody. So check it out. We kind of got something going on here. Worked out a bit of an entrance to the room here or an exit, I guess. <laughs> the blue copper, I think, is good. I, I like the sandstone as well. Kind of draws your attention. And if you're figuring if you're trying to figure out how to get out of here, you want to be able to, to see the exit, right? So that's why we're using stuff that stands out a bit more for it. Also, at each of these control panels, I've added sandstone to grab your attention as well. Not quite sure what we should do with the floor. I've been really struggling with that. I even went and tried granite, guys. I hate it. <laughs> it's the worst. <laughs> nope, 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 nope. But I know uh, Iskiel doesn't like this dripstone stuff too much. I, I think anyways. So I'm like trying to avoid that. Maybe we go for birch. Could be a thing. It's like mixing all kinds of things together here. Uh huh. Anyways, so also mirrored on the other side here, another four farms, and we got them hooked up. So we got the two tall flowers all ready to go. Let's just flip them all on, why don't we? They don't have much bone meal in them, though. <laughs> so I got hoppers under the slab here in case it accidentally lands there. So it should collect them all. Oh, I think some of them are out already. Uh huh, uh huh. And what we did is we got tilled farmland under these with a hopper below that so it will pick up any of the flowers that land on it what we haven't worked out yet is where we're gonna send all this stuff i'm kind of thinking we have like a big giant uh storage unit at the end here maybe a, at a top floor or something even and uh we'll send all this stuff to there we need an input stream like a bone meal to all the farms and then we need an output stream for all the stuff they create yeah you know what i think i'm digging the birch planks here this might be what we go with now, I do know <laughs> Birch is one of those blocks that gets a lot of, it gets a bad rap from people. Are you guys a Birch supporter or do you hate Birch? I feel like a lot of people hate Birch and I don't think it's justified. I think Birch is a wonderful block. Look out how bright and cheery it makes the room, right? <laughs> I don't know. I've always liked Birch. I know some people really hate it though. Uh, do we go for lanterns? Do we go for candles? These are the questions we have to ask ourselves. You know, building used to be so simple in the past. It's like, you got five blocks to choose from. Which three are you going to use? <laughs> now it's like, hey, you got a million options. What well, hundred are you going to use? And the more blocks you can use in a build, usually the better it looks. Oh, snappers. All right, everybody, check it out. Check it out. I've been busy here. Now, unfortunately, we probably... Well, I know we won't be able to. We, we definitely don't have enough time to finish this whole project today, but... Uh, we got a good chunk of it done here. I've been designing the room, working on some of the wiring as well. We got this full bottom row hooked up now, as well as this moss one, which we'll check out in just a second. But yeah, I think I'm liking the look of this. Now we do have to plan our base around the trident as well. Even indoors, we want our base to be trident friendly. So I'm thinking maybe in the middle there, we'll have a dolphin's grace tunnel that we can, and maybe like a water pool here where we can stand in tried into the, the tunnel there and then shoot out of this room when we want to leave it. I, I decided to mirror the room entirely. So we got another door over this way. This kind of just leads off to nothing though. <laughs> so we probably got to set up some balconies or something out here, uh, but we'll make it work. It's, it's fine. Uh, replace the tinted glass here with brown glass. I think that looks better. Now there's something in this room we haven't talked about yet. What is the deal with the uh, Airline peanuts. No, what, what's the deal with these tubes in the corners? What are we going to be using those for? Well, the plan is to hook those up to the moss farm. And uh, I can't go into full detail on this probably, but I'll just show you real quick what's going on. Since last episode, I have added a composting system down here. So we're going to be getting bone meal from the moss farm 
That will go up one of the tubes to the other farms. And the other tube then is going to be for moss and azalea bushes. Because we might want to use those for building or we might, might want to grow the azalea bushes. And we've had to add a switch down here to switch between the two. So by default, it's all the moss and that is going straight into these composters. Uh, we got four of them set up because the farm kind of runs at like four times hopper speed. And that's the only way it can keep up. And then as it creates the bone meal, it goes down to these droppers. So if there's an item in the dropper, the comparator detects that and then automatically shoots it out using this circuit. And that's all good. Those go to a water stream and then make their way up to feed the, the farm as well. So you can see here, we got some bone meal going by. It goes up the stream. Yeah, that water stream, it goes up here and feeds back into the farm itself. So it never runs out of bone meal. But then we also want to connect it up to our other farms in this area. So we're going to send it past there and go up the tube. And then we'll put all our water streams up in the ceiling just so it's away from our redstone as well. Because we're kind of running out of space down below here with all the redstone stuff. <laughs> it's getting in the way. Even here, uh, just to extend this, I'm going to have to move some redstone because it's in the way now. Uh, but yeah, this will feed over to a bubble bell elevator and uh, go up here. Okay, I think we got those set up and this is pretty cool as well We can see the bone meal whizzing by here and it just adds a bit more life into the build when you see stuff moving around <laughs> You got the the bubbles moving and you got the bone meal moving through there And for now since we don't really know where all our farms are gonna be I'm not gonna try hook this up to them until the very end Then I'll figure out the optimal route to send bone meal to all the farms So just for now I got the bone meal being stored in the chest up there just so it doesn't go to waste now, I got the other one hooked up here as well. So the idea is uh, we can have the bone meal farm on, but then if we want to collect moss or the azalea bushes for building, flip this lever down, and that's like the override. And those should be going up here. Yeah, here they come. And then we'll send those to our big chest uh, storage system in the back. Yeah, so there's actually two separate streams down here. One for the moss stuff and one for the bone meal stuff. The moss one, it goes over here and it goes up the column on the left over there and that runs at four times hopper speed and basically this gets unlocked so that uh the items can flow down into the moss droppers right instead of going into the composters some of them are still going to the composters but not nearly as much uh i heard you have fast horse i got like three fast horses three fast horses <laughs> uh-huh so like day one, I scouted the whole island for the horses. Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh, that's smart. What are you doing? <laughs> what? Don't even you, try you weren't even it, thinking what? you weren't even thinking about it. I got the timing perfect there. <laughs> oh, come on. Oh, I'm a it. master. I have a fast horse as well. Yeah, let's get in the um, dubs. Okay, I'm in. Ooh. Now this is how we get around, huh? It's a little dangerous around here. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Let's back off for a second. Just one okay. Second. Uh oh, I'm in the wrong screen. Okay, 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 okay. There. So we how's go. that whole uh, no armor thing going for you, by the way? I mean, I usually do this, don't I? Yeah. You got food. I mean, You're you, okay. You made up that lore, lore for me. Uh, that I. I oh, dude, this is very. I can't. <laughs> So what has happened here is I've lit up most of the caves and now we're just, yeah. it's, it's death around here. This is the worst. It's bad. This that's is probably my best killing. horse. Okay. Ha! Huh. I do have one that's faster though. You do? Yeah. This that is one's what, a good This is my all arounder. And... Yeah. Okay, let's see the jump. Oh wait. Oh that, my goodness. That was a baby jump. Wait, is that For me? real? Oh my goodness. Oh man, I'm so bad at jumping with these guys. Uh -oh. Can it go four blocks? That's four. Can it? Can it do that? Oh yeah, it can do four. No, no problem. Uh, no way. Not even trying, B Dubs. Man, you <laughs> yeah. are styling green horse mm, and everything. Like that? Oh, it's pretty <laughs> good. Are, are we going on the stuff. path or are we going straight ahead? Path. And we'll just see. You know, there's okay. no race to a certain point. We'll just yeah, see yeah. who's fastest. Yeah, yeah. This is for science. It's not for I'm better than you, right? Right, right, of course, of course. Even though we know the obvious answer there. Yes, right, that, yep, I am. And, and three, two, one, go. Giddy up. What? You, you turned left? Wait, what? 
<laughs> oh, I'm faster. <laughs> no, I stopped for a second because you did some wacky turn there. Look, I can turn all the way around. Look at you. See how far behind okay. you are. Oh, okay. Yeah. You might be a little faster. Yeah, you're catching up. Oh, all you see is your big giant eyes. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here I come. But Oh, yeah. But I'm if we faster. have something, we got to jump over. Yeah, then then you win that. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Hey, you're about to get lapped. <laughs> you got past <laughs> me first. Come on. Where are you? Oh, oh no. no. Yeah. Okay, you got okay. a speedy guy there then. Yeah. This so this is Lulu. What is that? A 13 sticker or something? Yeah, the, uh, no, well, low stick is what you want. It's like oh, golf. low stick. Okay. Is it over there? No, I think l let's go on the pads this way. Okay. Uh might have to make some new like intersection roads. Sorry, I'm going so fast. I'm probably yeah. oh slow down. Range. No, no, no. Have, yeah. have a heart here, V Dubs. I can't hear you. You're too fit. Yeah, I know. You're too far away. <laughs> um, just, I have a Doppler effect going on. You're going so quick here. <laughs> oh no. Okay, this way. Because it is Through actually it's a little bit of a journey to go from one end of the island to the other. I've noticed. It, yeah, it is, but with speed too, and with an actual good horse, mm -hmm. uh, it, it's it's not bad. <laughs> oh, you throwing shade <laughs> like crazy! You, you I, know what the I, big problem is? Every time I hit an intersection on this road, it's like, man, I wish B Dubs put some signs down so I knew which way to go. So, I, I waste like a minute every time figuring out which way I need to go. Right? Yes, yes, yes. And and trust me, Etho. Whenever I do something, I think, okay, how's Etho going to criticize it? Uh huh. And as you should, I thought about that. I did. Yeah. And I thought, ah, Etho, people are going to get lost. Etho oh, going to get lost. Oh, which way are we going Jevin? here? Okay, that's Jevons Road this, to his base. This is an easy one. It's a yeah, bad example. That's easy. Yes. There yeah. There are some tough ones. I think so. Here's my thought on that. Mm hmm. So, like, this intersection. Right here. This is a bad one. I have <laughs> no idea one. where this goes on the left. Right. This is a bad one. Uh, that goes to, like, Gem and the Swamp and, like, all the way to Spawn. Okay. Yes. And then this goes towards uh, me and the Bodum people. So, mm -hmm. let me show you another. let me show you another bad intersection. Okay. Um, oh, so you know they're bad. You know they're bad. That's, that's yes, good. I know they're bad. I knew, I knew, but I have a solution. I also noticed the path got a lit, lot thinner around our place. It's like the, the, the city ran out of money or something here. What, what was up with that, Beatups? I was running out of shovels. Uh, getting a little late or something? Yeah, yes, it was. Look, okay, sign up there. Go look at that sign. Oh, okay, the fancy part of town here it deserves signs. This is a nice, wide-open plains. Oh, yeah. And I, I was thinking... That if you and I set up, first of all, horse breeding, horses for sale. Yes. Okay. Yes. People need horses. We, we can't be people, the only ones. But people probably want speed more than anything. Especially if you got the, than, a nice flat trail like that. So, I mean, hello, business. You sell two horses. <gasps> you thinking of money? Yeah, I'm thinking of money. Oh, we sell, we sell I, I thought it was like a community effort, you know. Helping no. the poor. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, well, we're People going to the wallets. Okay, horses. okay. I like that. Yeah, you want you want a horse to get around, you get a fast horse. You want a horse for jumping, you get a jump up uh, by a jump horse. You and I use this space here to make like a, a horse course. <laughs> horse course. Oh, you've been saving that? No, no, I just thought of it on the fly. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Are you thinking um, of like a race course? Like where people race? A race, but with obstacles. All I wanted to do was just get the idea out there and see if you're interested. Mm -hmm. Very interested. I mean, I was picturing, like, not a circle, but, yes. like, a couple branches. Like, at this spot, you could go down. At this spot, you could go up or left or right. So it's more of a decision game. If you hit a target, it would open a thing. If you go around this corner, if you're fast enough these arrows won't hit you if you're too slow they will hit you or you might get hit with a slowness potion or something yeah because you know there's like forza racing and then there's mario kart racing right which Mar yeah mario kart racing style. mario kart racing okay okay yes i think you got something there b-dubs okay i Would don't say that wanna... often you know you usually don't... no <laughs> <laughs> but 
But you this is think one of those rare moments in life where you actually might have a good idea here. I might be onto something here. Finally, after wow. ten years. Whoa. <laughs> Yeah, so B-Dubs and I, we're going to be making a horse course, everybody. I'm actually pretty excited about this. I know we have a long history of whenever we do a project together, the server seems to reset just before we get the project done. But this time, it's going to be different. Yes, for reasons. Things are, are just going to be different this time. <laughs> now, I think we have gotten better at the game and quicker at doing things, so hopefully this time it'll be okay. And we're starting at the start of the season instead of the end like we usually do. So I'm going to be working on this a bunch next episode. For now, we got to think of some plans how we're actually going to do it. B-Dubs, I think, is going to be do doing most of the aesthetic stuff. He's kind of laid out the course for us here as well. The general plan for how to go. My job is going to be to do the gamey part of the course. Add obstacles, add redstone contraptions, make it interesting, make it fun to play. We got to figure out how to do that because we don't want it to just be a whole W and you win the race if you have a faster horse thing. That's not fun. That's not engaging. That's not interesting. <laughs> so one way we can make it more interesting, add layers of complexity, such as jumping. If we have parkour sections in the, the course, that'll make things more interesting. OK, let's try a little test here. Another idea is maybe we have targets in the course to activate certain mechanisms, barriers, that sort of thing uh, could be cool. And it would add a huge skill mm. factor to the game. It kind of turns this into an FPS horse race then, right? Because you got to aim, you got to hit targets. And they're actually, oh, it's pretty tricky. <laughs> I kind of learned this while doing Hurt and Hermits last season, that it's hard to hit a target mm. when you're moving, like in a minecart or on a horse. Mm. So that could be a cool thing, right? Obviously, it gets easier if you get closer to it. Mm. But maybe we design it so you can't get close to it, like maybe... It's somewhere you can't reach or something. I don't know. We'll think about that. That could be a good thing. Uh, also, player interaction would be great if we could have some sort of that. So maybe, just maybe, we design the course for PvP. <laughs> uh, have, like, stations where you get crossbows every so often. Kind of like in Mario Kart when you hit the question blocks. Maybe we get crossbows loaded with an arrow. And then as we're driving around the course here we can shoot other players very rarely though we don't want it to be like a an actual pvp combat we just want to do a little bit of damage here and there to someone and then maybe we have a pit stop they have to take um heal their horse up hop off for a second get some hay feed their horse heal them back up and then they can uh, continue on otherwise they risk their horse dying and they lose the race if their horse dies that could be cool anyways just thinking of stuff. Do you guys have any ideas? Let me know in the comments, but I think we'll have to end things for today and uh, we'll get to that next time. So thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Take care. Have a good day. Bye-bye.